Right, here's a uh, quite a tricky question, 13 mark question all about internal resistance. Um, you quite often see questions that are set out like this, which shows uh, the power supply there, EMF represented by the cell there, and there's the internal resistance. So we should know a little bit about internal resistance before we tackle a question like this. Um, some basic things are that the EMF, which is supplied by the cell there, well, where does that energy go? It's, it's measured in volts, it's, a, it's joules per coulomb. What happens to that energy? Well, some of it goes to the external circuit. But because we've got um, an internal resistance here, if any current flows through that circuit at all, then there'll be some voltage drop across that resistor. So some of the energy supplied, some of the voltage supplied by that EMF will be lost across that resistor, meaning that whatever this voltmeter reads will be a little bit less than the EMF because some of that is lost across there. So one way of writing that in the equation is that E equals V plus I times the internal resistance. So what that equation means really is the EMF, where does it go? Well, most of it usually is um, potential difference supplied to the rest of the circuit that will be measured by the voltmeter V. And some of it is lost inside the power supply because it's dropped across that internal resistance. Uh, let's have a look at the question then. Quite an unusual question. Don't see this very often. It's good given us a graph. It's a case that says the graph below shows the results from the experiment. And we've got a graph there of terminal PD um, against current. And it says explain why the terminal PD decreases as the current increases. All right, so you've got a straight line graph there. Well, before we tackle that question, I think it's a probably a good time to think about where that graph comes from uh, and what the graph actually means. Okay, our equation for internal resistance had E, the EMF, equals V, the external PD, plus IR. So that's, a, if you like, a conservation of energy thing, really, isn't it? That's the EMF, that's the voltage that we get out, that is some voltage dropped or lost across the internal resistance. Um, I'm just going to rearrange that first of all. Okay, What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the IR over the other side by minusing IR from both sides. Okay, And we get that. Okay, and I'm just going to make it easier by just switching it all the other way around, just a slightly easier to look at. Okay, so hopefully you're happy that um, this equation here is just this one rearranged. If you're not happy with that, pause the video and have a little look, see if you can rearrange that first equation to get that. Now what you might notice, or more likely you won't notice, is that that equation is of this form. Now you should recognize that as the equation of a straight line graph. Okay, so if I plot V voltage on the y axis and I plot I on the x axis, remember I times R is the same as R times I, it's just in the awkward place there. If I plot then voltage on the y-axis against current on the x-axis, then I've got something quite interesting because what I've got, what I've got now is a straight line graph where the gradient is negative because I've got a little negative there. Okay, so M stands for gradient. So the gradient will be minus R, and of course R was the internal resistance. So the gradient is going to give me the internal resistance. And the intercept, C, is going to give me the EMF. Okay, so that's quite a useful little relationship there. It tells me that if I plot a graph of voltage, so that's the external voltage on my circuit against the current, okay, I get a straight line graph of negative gradient. If you think about what's actually going on there, that's not surprising because the more current 
flows through that circuit, the more of the voltage is dropped across that internal resistance, meaning there's less external voltage available to the rest of the circuit. So rather than thinking about the mass, let's think about the physics. The physics tells us that if current increases in that circuit, then the internal resistance, if you like, has a greater effect. There's a bigger voltage drop across that internal resistance, meaning that the EMF supplied, which remains fixed, of course, less of that voltage is available for the external circuit. So that's why we get that graph of negative gradient. So let's have a look back at the question. OK, so this was the question. It asked us, gave us the graph, and it said, why does the terminal PD decrease as the current increases? So from our previous discussion, we should be able to answer that now. OK, there are two marks for this question. Uh, we're going to get our first mark for saying that potential difference is dropped or energy is lost, either of those phrases are OK, uh, across the internal resistance inside the power supply. So we know that as soon as current flows, potential difference is dropped or lost across there. That means that there is less voltage available for the terminal PD. So the terminal PD goes down as the current increases. So as the current increases, the PD dropped across the internal resistance increases. Obviously, we can see IR is going to go up if I goes up. And because the terminal PD is E minus IR, if IR goes up, V is obviously going to go down. The next part of the question asks us to use the graph to find the EMF of the cell. So here's our graph again, uh, and we should remember that the intercept there was equal to the EMF. Another way of thinking about it is that here the current is zero, isn't it? And if no current flows, then no potential difference is dropped across the internal resistance, and whatever that terminal PD is, is going to be equal to the EMF. So we've just got to read that value of the intercept there. Now amazingly, even when people know that's what they've got to do, they read that incorrectly. If we look at it carefully, we've got five small squares representing 0.2 volts. So five small squares representing 0.2 volts. That means each small square is going to be 0.04 volts. And if we look very closely, we can see the intercept is three small squares there. It's just above 1.5, isn't it? Three of those is going to give us on top of our 1.4, it's going to give us a value of 1.52 volts. Okay, so on this part, you've got to find the internal resistance. Well, we know that from our um, equation earlier that the gradient was equal to minus the internal resistance, or the other way around, internal resistance is equal to minus the gradient, whichever you prefer. Um, so you get one mark of the three for knowing that and implying that. You get your second mark for putting some numbers in. I'm not going to do that. I think the answer was 0.45 ohms. That's just calculating the gradient like you would do y distance divided by x distance for the triangle on the graph. For part C, uh, I'm just going to sketch that below here. Here's our original graph. OK, part C, part 1 says, draw a line on the graph that shows the results obtained from a cell with the same EMF but double the internal resistance. Well, if we've got the same EMF but double the internal resistance, if it's the same EMF, we're going to start at the same point there. If the internal resistance is doubled, the gradient will be doubled, so we're going to have a line that's twice the gradient, twice as steep. So that would be the answer to part one. Uh, the second one says the same EMF but negligible internal resistance. Well, if it's got the same EMF and negligible internal resistance, then again, we're going to start at the same point. But of course, if there's no resistance, no internal resistance, then no uh, potential difference is going to be dropped across the internal resistor. So no matter what the current is, the terminal PD is going to be the same. So it's a straight horizontal line. Uh, we'll have a quick look at part D here, first of all. Uh, calculate the charge flowing through the cell in 15 seconds if the variable resistor is set so that the current is 0.89 amps. So we've got current of 0.89 amps, 15 seconds, we're after the charge. 
So we're going to use Q equals IT 0.89 times 15, which gives us an answer of 12 coulombs. Or should I say 13 coulombs? So 13 coulombs is the answer. The last part of the question, um, a lot of people struggle with this because they don't really understand what the question is asking. It's asking for the energy dissipated in the internal resistance per second. Well, energy dissipated per second is power. That's what power is, energy transferred per second. So the question is really asking what is the power um, dissipated through the internal resistance. Okay, so power is I squared R. I've put the little r because it's the internal resistor. We had the current we knew was 0 0.89. It told us that, so 0 0.89 squared. And the internal resistance was 0 0.45. And if we work that out, we get an answer of 0 0.36 watts. Now, if you couldn't answer that, and I've spoken to this a uh, few people about this, you know, if you didn't really understand the energy dissipated per second or what they were asking, there's a clue there, isn't there? The unit, watts, is the unit of power. So that should have given you a little clue what to do. Um, so that's that question. Long question, 13 marks, quite a toughie. Um, make sure you understand how the graph is drawn from those uh, values of internal resistance, voltage, and current, what the gradient of that graph represents, what the intercept of that graph represents, um, and you shouldn't have any problems with a question like that.